Hello and welcome to today's Subscriber Sunday. This one's really got me thinking. Uh, so our question comes from Joe Drinkwater. Thank you very much. And an even bigger thank you to Mr. Fox. I love it when viewers start giving each other advice. And Mr. Fox regularly comments on other people's um, questions and teaches them for me. And I, I really get excited when students start helping themselves out. Because this is a YouTube community, and you know, why wouldn't you want to get better by helping others? I think that's absolutely fabulous. So big thanks to both of you, and for making me think really hard. So this week I released an updated question two, paper one, where I explained why P paragraphs um, will slow you down. So once you can do P paragraphs and you understand how to give a point, give some evidence and write an explanation. Once you can already do that, it's time to kick on and do something different. That video explains why and, uh, oh, sorry. Here, Joe Drinkwater says, Mr. Salas, my teacher keeps wanting me to write about the effect on the reader in my paragraphs. How do I achieve this? That's a really good question. Uh, and Mr. Fox has an answer. So the teachers in Mr. Fox's school uh, teach this technique, PETAL, which I've come across before. And the P stands for point, the E for evidence, the T for technique, A for analyze, and L for link. Well, let's read through the excellent advice that Mr. Fox give, gives, and then I'm going to tell you how to apply it. So point, for example, the writer makes us feel sorry for Ted. Then give your evidence use a quote that has a technique in it. Point out the technique, say what it is. For example, the writer uses a hyperbole, which means an over-exaggeration. Then you analyze by saying how this helps your point. So for example, this helps us realize how big this is for Ted and lets us relate to him. And then you link that back to the question, this makes us feel sympathetic. So in Mr. Fox's example, the question must have had sympathy or sympathetic in it okay and he's linking back and then he says in my analyze section um, that's where I put the effect on the reader you can literally just say this makes us feel blah 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 whatever it is um, this lets us relate to the character assuming that the question was about sympathizing with the character well that's actually a really good way of writing p paragraphs which score you more marks and the um, the three extra things are you're naming the technique um, you're writing a little bit more analysis and you're linking it back to the question so this is very good advice but I think I can improve it so here is a question and I'm going to give you my petal paragraph but then I'm going to show you how to make it even better for you so how does the writer make us sympathize with Tiny Tim? So Tiny Tim is a little crippled character in A Christmas Carol and Dickens, who is the writer here, wants us to sympathize with him. So let's have a look at a petal paragraph. The point. The writer makes us feel sorry for Tim. There's my point. Who he describes several times as reacting last of all so it's my point leading to my evidence, my quotation. Uh, so last of all, the Cratchit family. The repetition reminds us that Tim is slower and weaker than the rest of his family. So repetition is the technique, the T. And then my analysis comes with, um, reminds us that Tim is slower and weaker than the rest of his family and closer to death. So I put an extra idea closer to death into the analysis. Then I'm going to link back to the question, which was sympathize. This makes us feel sympathy for him. Okay, so that follows petal through uh, without any waffle, and that was 49 words. So petal is a good technique for writing good paragraphs that will score you marks. However, what I want to show you is how you can turn a petal paragraph into a petal sentence. And then what you'll see is that you're using 28 words instead of 49. So my advice to you is, once you can do this, once you can write in petal paragraphs, 
then you need to consider writing petal sentences. It will not only make you sound more expert as a student of English literature or as a student of English language, it will allow you to write much more in your exam time because you've saved yourself 30 words here. Well, sorry, uh, 21, isn't it? You've saved yourself 21 words. Uh, that's nearly 50%. So you're guaranteeing yourself um, about 40% more time in the exam to make more points. And when we read this, you will see that it will score exactly the same marks as this. You haven't left any ideas out and you still included everything in petal. So you're going to get the same marks, but actually overall your question, you're going to get more marks because you will write many more sentences like this than you can write paragraphs that long. So let's now have a look at the sentence. The writer describes Tiny Tim repeatedly, so there's my technique in the word repeatedly, uh, as reacting last of all. Now I've got my quotation, my evidence, and I've also got my point coming here, so that we sympathise with his slowness. So that's my main point, we are sympathising with him. And I don't link at the end, okay, which is a slow way to do it, I link early on, early doors I link to the question. That's a much more advanced way of bringing the reader, the examiner, bringing the examiner with me. Um, so that we sympathise with his slowness, weakness, and imagine him closer to death. Okay, and there's my analysis, carries on after the link. It's got exactly the same ideas as that paragraph. Okay, I haven't said this is repetition, I've just said, describes Tiny Tim repeatedly. That is my technique. Now, the examiner is not after you using a particular terminology. You don't have to use the word um, repetition in there. In fact, when it comes to looking at the language that will score you marks here as terminology, uh, well, that's terminology there. That is subject terminology. And so is sim sympathize. That is subject terminology. Okay, so the terminology is already included in my sentence. I don't need just to talk about verbs or nouns or um, similes or metaphors. Those aren't the only kinds of terminology. So I hope you can see how you can score much higher marks by writing in petal sentences. If you would like uh, to practice this and have a go yourself, why not put some in the comments below and uh, I will probably add you to the next Subscriber Sunday video and give you some, give you some help. In the meantime, uh, I would love you to contribute like the fantastic Mr Fox has done to try and help other students on the channel. He's also got me thinking much more deeply, uh, so I'm really grateful for that and hopefully um, you'll check out that video, Kill P, um, it's not called that, it's called Updated Question 2 Paper 1. And uh, big thanks again to Joe Drinkwater for asking such a useful question. So, goodbye, see you next Sunday.